My name is Carlo Manno, and I work with Dr. Rios in the Department of Molecular Biophysics and Physiology at Rush University in Chicago. For this video summary, I will briefly explain the basis of our last paper titled Confocal Imaging of Transmembrane Voltage by Sear of Diana Nebs, published in the Methods and Approaches section of the journal in February of 2013. Historically, there have been some technical struggles to measure the voltage changes across the T-tubule membrane of skeletal muscle fibers due to the insufficient sensitivity of available methods. Similar problems complicate the imaging of potential in other excitable tissues, and for several reasons diet and EPS has been used in most attempts. Generally, when this dye has been used in a non ratiometric mode, for example looking at the single wavelength, the sensitivity is less than 10% per 100 millivolts, and in the ratioing mode between 3 to 15%. All this leads us to the objective of this paper, which is to improve the sensitivity of the optical technique in order to follow the dynamic change in the membrane potential, or VM, along a period of time, especially if done by confocal microscopy where the light acquired is limited. We did it applying the shifted excitation and emission ratioing, or SEER, which was described in the lab by Launiconis in 2005 as a way to improve the sensitivity of a calcium dye. The technique is applicable to any fluorescent indicator that undergoes a dual spectral shift, that is, a shift in both the excitation and the emission spectra. In this paper, we use two different measurement systems the size 5 live with a super fast scanner in order to measure the diatonep signal with a good temporal resolution, and a Leica TCP SP2 in order to optimize the sensitivity of the fluorescent signal. Now, what physiological system we study? In this animated cartoon, we represent the activation of contraction in a muscle cell. Excitation of a plasma membrane at the neuromuscular junction generates an action potential which runs radially along the T-tubule system and transiently activates the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and into the cytosol through channels named rhyanoidin receptors. There, calcium diffuses and interacts with the myofilament proteins, allowing the contraction of this cell. So, what is a good way to measure these fast changes in the membrane potential propagating along the plasma membrane and the T-system? I need to start by saying that every time a membrane is depolarized or hyperpolarized, the changes in the electric field will change the energy of the electronic quantum state of the ADNEPS, resulting in essentially parallel shift in the excitation and emission spectra as shown here in A. Depolarization will shift the spectra towards the left and vice versa. The shifts result in a variation in the recorded fluorescent signal and the polarity of the change will depend on the wavelength range where the fluorescence is collected. Thus, in the region marked emission 1, the change will be an increase and in emission 2, a decrease upon depolarization. An additional factor is a shift in the excitation spectrum which plots the efficiency of excitation as a function of excitation wavelength. Combining two excitation wavelengths, excitation 1 and excitation 2, with two emission ranges, one obtains four possible signals, F11, F22, F12, and F22, which are plotted here as dashed lines in B. A better use of the information is provided by so-called ratiometric signals, obtained by ratioing these primary non-ratio ones. These signals are better than non-ratiometric for different reasons. One is an increase in the amplitude when the polarity of the non-ratio signal is opposite. Classically, one can ratio the two signals collected in the same emission range with alternate excitation thus obtaining the excitation ratio signal F22 over F12 in green here, or by dividing the two signals excited by the same light and collected from two emission ranges, and in this case F22 over F21, or emission ratio, shown here in red. We can improve even more the sensitivity of the signal using SEER by shifting the the same at the same time the excitation and emission and calculating the ratio F22 over F11, shown here in black. A formal derivation which 
can be found in a paper shows that SEER improves the conventional ratiometry by about 100% in confocal imaging of potential difference across the membrane of skeletal muscle fibers. In the present paper, we demonstrate improved sensitivity of more than 20% of the initial ratio value for a change of 100 millivolts in membrane potential. Next, I will illustrate one of two applications presented in the paper of this increment in sensitivity. Thanks to the greater temporal resolution of a very fast confocal scanner, the 5 Live, made by car size, we were able to image the propagation of an action potential along the T-system. In A we show an XY image of the Diane Epstein cell. In B we can see the line scan F of XT. This image is obtained by repeatedly and rapidly imaging fluorescence along the dashed line in A. The two signals, F11 and F22, are obtained essentially simultaneously, and what is shown in B is already the ratio F22 over F11. The cell is stimulated periodically, and one can clearly see in green the large negative swings associated with each action potential. The curve in black in graph C is the ratio average in a region of the line scan near the cell surface, marked here with a black bracket in B. In green is the corresponding average near the center of the fiber, and in red is the same average after some rescaling to facilitate the comparison, which shows a definite lag compared with the signal at the surface. Assuming that the action potential starts simultaneously at the surface and propagates radially, the magnitude of the lag and the geometry of the fiber can be combined to calculate a speed of propagation of 30 meters per second. This, to our knowledge, is the first time that an action potential propagated inwardly along the T-system of a skeletal muscle cell has been imaged, and the major improvement provided by SEER made this advance possible. In the paper, we also implemented the technique in a second confocal scanner with greater sensitivity but lower temporal resolution. This implementation allowed us to demonstrate severe decay and local failing of action potentials upon stimulation of muscle cells with a protocol leading to muscle fatigue. So as a final remark, we can say that the use of SEER was shown to increase the sensitivity of the voltage monitor Diana Neps to about double of that in excitation or emission ratio and that this application adds imaging of membrane voltage to the growing number of dynamic optical techniques that can be enhanced using shifted excitation and emission ratio of fluorescence. Thank you for your attention.